up first, I'm going to put these on. Up first, we have Nancy. Nancy, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself, please. And again, if you can, keep it to one question because we want to get as many people in as we can. Thanks. Okay. Hi. Um, th about three years ago, I landed in the hospital when I suddenly developed AFib, and they did an echocardiogram, and they determined mild aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. I was put on Sodalol and a blood thinner and went into uh, went on a 100% whole food plant-based diet with no added oils. I also started exercising and have lost 65 pounds, though I still have 80 more to lose. And I was able to get off my blood pressure medicine as well. I recently had another echocardiogram last week and it showed a little more thickening. My doctor said there's nothing I can do to reverse or slow this down, but that is something I that can happen with aging or in some people. I'm actually 60 years old right now. Um, can diet, uh, like I'm doing whole food, plant-based, no oil and exercise and getting down to a proper weight reverse or slow down the stenosis, regurgitation and or AFib? Is there anything I can do? Um, so first disclaimer is that when we're doing a public symposium, we never want to give specific medical advice to people. So um, just throwing out that because you actually didn't cross the line. You're actually asking about the disease rather than about you. So I'm happy to try to address that. Well said. Um, and in general, um, when you think about, uh, you mentioned weight. It turns out that the cardiac output so much uh, is, I mean, your heart is working to feed your body. If you had uh, a smaller body, like you were saying, you want to lose another 80 pounds, uh, that would actually decrease the amount of workload that your heart has to do. And so it would decrease the flow across that valve because it's the flow that is actually causing the deterioration. And once it starts deteriorating, it can continue. Uh, <clears throat> the one thing that has been associated with an, uh, a slightly improved outcome, but not vigorously improved, was statins, that would imp imply that plant-based diet could lower cholesterol and lower the, uh, the amount of you know, hardening of that valve. Uh, not maybe the aortic regurgitation or leaking, but the aortic valve narrowing, the stenosis. It turns out that uh, if you look at it under a microscope, it looks just like coronary plaque. That it looks almost identical. Uh, that is, you're developing what looks like plaque on that valve, and that's what's causing the pro progressive narrowing. Uh, however, when you've, people have tried this with uh, prospectively with with uh, statins, for example, they've gotten some mixed results. Uh, but if you've got your cholesterol controlled, your blood pressure controlled. By, by the way, the blood pressure is uniquely related to the progression of the leaking. So I'd say um, cholesterol for the, for the narrowing and blood pressure for the leaking and trying to decrease how much the valve has to do. And that you do by getting down to ideal body weight. Thanks, Dr. Williams. Up next, we have Sophia. Sophia, if you can unmute yourself, please. Hi, doctor. Thank you so much. My question is about arrhythmia, please. What would help as supplements? I take uh, magnesium and I don't want to overdo it. So what else would help? I'm vegan too. I'm sorry, I said magnesium for anemia? For uh, arrhythmia, please. So mag magnesium is actually really good for rhythm. Um, so I'll, I will uh, answer that one. Anemia is not in so much of a cardiology thing. In fact, um, uh, more anemic people, unless you get really, really bad, it lowers the viscosity. It makes the, the work easier on the heart until you get to a point where it's having trouble with oxygen, then it's not so good. Um, but I would say that magnesium is really important for uh, people who have rhythm disturbances. Some of them particularly from the lower chamber or ventricular rhythm disturbances do much better if they're taking a magnesium supplement. Um, most of the iron uh, supplements are that you, that you can get over the counter are not the oxidized iron, and those are helpful for uh, particular types of anemia. But you really, anemia is something that you really should be um, getting evaluated by a physician, particularly if the hemoglobin is uh, spectacularly low, more less than seven grams, it really needs to be evaluated and managed carefully. 
Thanks, Doctor. Up next, we have Rita. Rita, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you, Dr. William. Uh, we met in New York City at the World Vegan Vision Conference and also at the Real Truth the he About Health Conference Hi. in Long Island. It's so good to see you again. Uh, quickly, keto shake. What are your thoughts on that? And also the uh, premium extra virgin olive oil. My understanding is that all the virgin olive oils are not alike. And I know that Dr. Dale Bredesen, you know, he recommends from Amphora Nueva, and they are distributing from the Berkeley in California. They have the highest content of polyphenols. Then there is another company from Australia. Every, uh, every company do not really measure the polyphenol contents, which are the ones our understanding is that good for the heart. So what would you say to the people and the public that they cannot get anything and everything? Thank you. Okay, so I would say, first of all, um, I'm really in cardiovascular mortality. I've never seen anything about polyphenols <clears throat> and the olive oil <clears throat> uh, comparison of different kinds. Uh, saturated fat uh, is supposedly better or is measured to be better in, um, in uh, the extra virgin olive oil. And that's why it was chosen in the randomized trials. There was a, a scandal I think about two years ago about companies saying that they were sending out, um, uh, sending out uh, extra virgin olive oil when it actually wasn't. Um, so you, you might have to make sure that you have a reputable source. Uh, so I'll stay out of the olive oil thing because I don't have any randomized trials. You can tell all I talk about is trials. Uh, the keto shake uh, would be an easier one to answer if, if I knew what the components were. I mean, you really can do a vegan keto. And if you're doing that, that should improve the outcomes. If it's got animal products in it, I would stay far away. Thank you, doctor. And just a reminder to everybody, if we can just keep them to one questions quick and direct, we've only got a few minutes left. So Denise, you're up next. Thank you so much for unmuting yourself, Denise. Okay, Dr. Williams, you are the best. How I wish you were consulting in other states. Um, besides Chicago. Um, I just put in my husband's numbers in the um, astrocharm.org calculator because we just did the CAC scan and uh, it showed uh, just a 2.7% risk of, of cardiac event in 10 years. Uh, but the, his CAC score of 93 was in the Widowmaker. And so we're trying to figure out, we eat a great whole food plant-based diet and uh, do all the lifestyle principles. And one, one dietary question I have is coconut milk, whether we should, he should not use that at all because of some elevated LDL. Um, and we're also trying to figure out that statin issue. So I don't know if you have anything you might be able to share on that. So again, uh, let's take it off of your husband and, and talk about in general. Uh, I'm so glad that you found the Astro Charm that you know, you're measuring the risk take all the risk factors and include the coronary calcium. But the one thing that um, uh, I was going to say, the thunder bolt, you actually took it already. That is, you said it was in the Widowmaker. That is, coronary calcium is not all the same. It's like pitching in baseball or real estate. It's location, location, location. You 90 in your distal right coronary artery would be almost meaningless. I would be wondering if aspirin is good enough. Uh, whereas 100, we would say, okay, yeah, aspirin is probably good enough. Whereas if this is in your left main or your left anterior descending, those probably need to be taken extremely seriously. And the best way to do that would be to try to get an LDL to our nearest, our, our newest uh, European Society of Cardiology guideline level of less than 55. And that answers the rest of your questions. If you whole food plant-based diet, uh, doesn't get your LDL less than 55, then you're going to have to add something. And um, we have more trial evidence for statins than anything else. PCSK9 inhibitors are pretty good. Ozetamibe has been used to lower LDL, uh, as Dr. Khan was saying, but we don't have as much outcome studies as we do. And so uh, I would say that uh, anything that's going to raise your LDL 
you would probably try to avoid, and that would include coconut oil. 